Hey guys, before the video starts, just want to say I'm going on tour again, finally. This feels crazy to say, but with vaccines rolling out and everything and, you know, life sort of getting back to normal, uh, I got shows coming up uh, at the end of the year. I will be in Raleigh, North Carolina, Huntsville, Alabama, Nashville, Tennessee, Boston, Massachusetts, Bridgeport, Connecticut, New Brunswick, New Jersey, and Levittown, New York. Some shows are already sold out because I announced this last week on my Twitter and Instagram. Um, so we added second shows, but we may still add more. So if you want to stay in the loop, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll be posting about shows on there. Link in the description, or just go to curtiscar.com, grab your tickets, and I'll, uh, I'll see you at the end of the year. Uh, enjoy the video. All right, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, what's up? How's it going? And if you're coming back, what's up? How's it going? Really good to see you again. I hope you're doing well. You see what happens when you subscribe to my channel? You get an extra greeting at the beginning, so do it. Uh, pay no attention to uh, my appearance right now, please. Do not perceive me. I mean, watch the video and, you know, like it and stuff, but perception is off limits, all right? I will say if they do a Joe Dirt remake, dude, I'm a fucking shoe in <laughs> Folks, how do you think the world's gonna end? Climate change, alien invasion, maybe a big shark. <laughs> I don't know. Nobody knows how humanity will come to an end. I mean, it's 100% gonna be climate change, but hey, you never know. Could be a could be a big shark. The whole concept of the apocalypse is insanely popular in modern media and even ancient media. In the good book, not Twilight, the other one, the Bible, they talk about how Armageddon is the place where the kings of the earth under demonic leadership will wage war on the forces of God at the end of history. But hey man, if that happens, Armageddon me a cold one and a lawn chair. <laughs> Cause that sounds kinda... <laughs> Full transparency here, I also thought the term Armageddon came from the Bruce Willis movie, so. But now I know that's not true. I learned something new, and that's a good thing, so you can't make fun of me for it. Speaking of movies, there have been a staggering amount of movies that take place either during the apocalypse or after the apocalypse. There's also a lot that take place before the apocalypse, but that's like pretty much every movie, I guess. You know, there's Independence Day, The Day After Tomorrow, War of the Worlds, War of the Worlds, Tom Cruise edition. This is the end, The Happening, The Core, Snowpiercer, I Am Legend. Straight up, this whole video could just be me listing off apocalyptic movies, but you don't want that, right? Right? Or you do? I don't know. It'd be a lot easier for me. You don't? Okay. And for the most part, all these movies are pretty similar, but they're all so much fun to watch, man. Show me a big city just exploding or just some dangerous threat coming towards the main character and he's just like, we gotta go. Now. And I'm there, dude. Dude, there's one like chase scene the day after tomorrow where Jake Gyllenhaal and friends are like running away from ice. <laughs> do you remember that shit? That is like simultaneously the dumbest and coolest scene of all time. Pun intended. All these apocalyptic movies are awesome. Except for Knowing, starring Nicolas Cage. That movie has the worst ending I've ever seen in my life. Spoiler alert, the kids were Adam and Eve the whole time. I don't even feel bad about spoiling it, okay? I just did you a favor. I wish I was knowing how to get those two hours of my life back. There's also another apocalyptic movie that came out that I want to talk about. It came out in 2009 and it was called 2012. And this movie is just so fascinating to me because it came out like during the time where everybody thought the world was going to end in 2012. So the movie studio was like, you know what? <laughs> Let's make some money off of that fear. If you forget, people thought uh, the world was going to end in 2012 because um, an ancient like Mayan calendar ended on December 21st, 2012. Some people thought Earth was gonna collide with this planet called Planet X, or they thought there was gonna be like some natural disaster like a tidal wave or a big shark. Some people also were tying it to the Large Hadron Collider. They thought that it was gonna make this huge like black hole and it was gonna give planet Earth the old suck. It's gonna give us the old gluck gluck super soaker 9000. And dude, I remember genuinely like being terrified. Like I, th I straight up thought that we were gonna die in the year 2012 because I would just watch so many YouTube videos from like these weird conspiracy theorists and I was 13, so I didn't know any better. And YouTube recommendations are a scary thing. One minute you're watching Mark Johnson's part and Fully Flared, and then the next minute you're watching a video called, hey, Curtis, you know you're gonna die in five years? Yeah, how about you tell your friends about it too so they can think differently of you? Obviously, we survived 2012. At what cost? No, obviously we survived 2012, but funny enough, the year 2012 isn't the first big apocalypse scare that I lived through. No, no, no. When I was five years old, I survived Y2K. I know some of you might be a little too young uh, to know what Y2K was. 
Uh, so let me give you a brief summary. Back in the day, like in the 80s and 90s, when it came to like keeping track of the date, computer programs only used like a two number system because you know, why spend all that time putting like 1992 when you can just put 92, right? Makes sense, we still do that today. But then people started to wonder like, what year is the computer gonna think it is when it gets to the year 2000? Cause there's just gonna be two zeros. If they're not programmed for this, we're fucked. So with that, people thought computer systems worldwide would just like shut down at midnight on New Year's. Uh, They thought planes would fall out of the sky, furnaces would turn off, cars would stop working, radio signals would go awry, just pretty much any technology would just not work anymore. Like news publications were writing about this, they were selling Y2K survival kits. Call now and get the ultimate Y2K survival kit. Prince even wrote a fucking banger about this back in 1982. Like this was a, this is like a big thing in like the zeitgeist for a while. Fucking huge word I just pulled out. No big deal. Like they had people everywhere working overtime trying to like figure out how to stop Y2K from happening or if it even was going to happen. I mean, I don't know why they couldn't just like put the computer's date forward a few years and then see what happened. But what do I know? So a lot of people were freaking out, but spoiler alert. The kids were Adam and Eve the whole time. No, spoiler alert, nothing happened. We we're, were all, we were all fine. The worst thing that happened was like some vending machines in Australia stopped working, which I mean, could feel like the end of the world if you're really craving a Snickers bar, you know? <laughs> or sorry, a Snickers bar. Good I mate. Like I said earlier, I was five years old when this happened, so I didn't fully understand it. I do remember my neighbors throwing like an end of the world party that my parents went to. So luckily there were people who didn't actually think this was going to happen. Are you filling up your car because of Y2K? Not at all. Not worried. Why are you filling up your car? Out of gas. And obviously news reports about Y2K only fueled the fire. We've seen what bad news reporting can do. Some people were like fully convinced that Y2K was a real thing. And just like the movie 2012 did in 2009, the PAX TV network aired a special called How to Prepare Your Family for Y2K. And it is a trip. So I thought it'd be fun to take a look back to the beautiful year of 1999 and see how people were preparing their family for the apocalypse that never happened. So the video starts with a host doing a voiceover about how there's tons of natural disasters that occur all over the world every day, but Y2K is gonna be the worst thing that's ever gonna happen to humanity. And I really like at the bottom, where it says all copyrights acknowledged and they spelt acknowledged incorrectly because they put two Ks instead of one, which begs the question. Why 2 k Thank you. Thanks so much, that's the video, bye. And that's the best joke I'm ever gonna make. Sorry, I peaked. Now I peaked, even if I like have a kid one day. Not as impressive. Yo, check it out, this is my baby. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, right? I just like made a new wife. Yeah, that's amazing. And look, he's so happy. He keeps laughing. <laughs> look at him. Yeah, do you wanna laugh? Yeah, sure. Okay. So you know Y2K, right? Okay, let's keep going. Also, I wouldn't, I wouldn't toss a baby like that. I would never do that. I would chuck it as hard as I could. I'm kidding, I wouldn't do any of that. Have we become so dependent on computers that our society is at risk if they fail? Oh, sir, if you only knew. <laughs> the fact is, during the past 30 years, computers have taken over virtually every aspect of modern life. Each of these items, and hundreds more, are all controlled by a computer-based system called an embedded chip. The truth is, it would be hard to find a modern appliance of any kind that wasn't computer-enhanced in some way. Man, <laughs> no, not the hand mixer. No! the end of the world could you imagine like a post-apocalyptic movie where everything about the earth is the exact same except like stand mixers don't work anymore hey dad i'm hungry are those brownies ready yet i know i know all i gotta do is plug this in mix around the ingredients it'll be done in no time just hold on this summer get ready for a motion picture like you've never seen before from the producers that brought you the smash hit knowing comes a brand new jam-packed post-apocalyptic movie that asks the question. Hey dad, why aren't you mixing those ingredients quickly? I'm sorry, I can't. It's it's not working. What? What would you do if life as you knew came to an end? So you're telling me that every single electric mixer on earth just doesn't work anymore? Sir, it's really not that big of a deal. Will you tell that to my starving son over here who can't even eat his brownies because my arm gets too tired when I whisk the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients? 
Sir, I'm sorry. I had no idea. Oh! Were you here the whole time? Hey, Dad, what are those? Son, those are trucks full of whisks. We gotta go. Now. This goes all the way to the top. Mr. President, grab my hand! The last stand, Mixer. Oh, sorry to whisk you away like that. Okay, I made that movie trailer as a joke, but Hollywood, hit me up. Government and industry are doing everything they can to fix the problem. But in the event they don't make it, is there anything you can do? Probably not. Actually, there is. Let's go. Okay, so this is where we meet all the experts that are going to teach us how to survive Y2K. These are guys who are like, they've like written books about it and stuff. Food, water, and shelter. If you cover those, everything else is secondary, but those are the primary ones you've got to address. Nice. Uh, glad they brought in the experts for that one. Fuck, I mean, how could we have known that if it wasn't for this Michael guy? <laughs> Jeez. Food, water, and shelter. I don't really know. Okay. Also, another thing I want to touch on. They say in this video that, like, panicking is bad. Like, you shouldn't panic because that just makes everything worse. Some experts believe that panic could cause more problems than the problem itself. But, like, people are panicking because you're making videos like this, you know? It's like if you made an instructional video about, like, how to make a, the best burger. And then at the end, you're just like, remember, guys, don't make a burger. Whatever you do, don't do it. But this is how you do it. Like, people weren't even sure that this thing was going to happen. And these fucking people made a video about what to do when this thing actually does happen. I believe we will have the declaration of a national emergency. I think we'll have martial law by this time next year. I don't think there will be New Year's Eve celebrations like we have seen them in the past. Because I think there will be troops in the street. This is like watching the opposite of the Titanic. In the Titanic, all the characters think it's going to turn out all good. But obviously it doesn't. And the audience knows that from the beginning. This is the exact opposite of that. <laughs> we all know it's going to be fine. But they're all freaking out like they're going to die. And it's so funny to think that all these like professionals talking about it. Like these guys have written books and stuff. And they were all just fucking wrong these guys were dead wrong about everything these guys for sure got in like a fight with their wives like on new year's eve for sure a hundred percent because they probably forced their family to like hide out in a basement or some shit what babe i'm sorry i i straight up thought electronics was gonna stop i thought the world was gonna end oh, you're pretty mad huh does this mean we're not gonna you know tonight oh buddy that ship has sailed I'll be upstairs using my battery-powered device that still works, jackass. Oh, why, 2K? Why? Also, the person who uploaded this to YouTube uh, kept in some of the commercials that played, like, during this program, and they're just so... <laughs> they're so goddamn funny. On December 31st, the world will celebrate an event that begins in one century and ends in the next. Millennium Live. Only on TV. The contrast is just so good. And remember, if you follow these steps, you can survive the deadly series of events that will happen during the new millennium. It's the new millennium! We're never gonna die! So the next part, they're gonna want to talk about um, hoarding a bunch of water. You know, buying two liter bottles of pop and then just filling them with water once you're done drinking them. And then you sort of just hide them around your house. You know, pretty <laughs> pretty standard stuff. I will say for the most part, these tips are just like good for just any like emergency. I'm not saying like hide two liter bottles of water around your house. I'm just like, just saying it's good to have like a backup supply of water, you know, just in case something happens. And not once did they tell people to uh, stock up on copious amounts of toilet paper for no reason so if only they aired this when covid was popping off we could have uh, we could have saved a lot of poopy butts but i mean us big brain people had mickey mouse bidets anyway but amidst the rare instances of good advice in this video there are so many times when they say shit that just doesn't make any sense at all that brings us to the second of the most important basic needs items food but just having something that says food on the label may not be enough I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I watched this video like several times and I still don't know what he means. But just having something that says food on the label may not be enough. Like if I put a sticker that says food on a traffic cone, that doesn't make it like an ice cream cone, right? You can't just eat it. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about, man? I mean, it is very funny. 
to think that at one time he actually thought that like if you put food if you put the word food on anything that automatically means you can eat it he just fucking walked around his house all day like this honey you yeah. wanna <laughs> you know i don't know what you mean you're like uh i don't know what you're trying to say to me come on what what do you want me to i don't get it <laughs> So then they go on to talk about how to heat your house and other survival tips, which again are pretty basic. Like watching this, I felt like they already had a video called how to prepare your family for an emergency. And then when this Y2K stuff started popping up, they were like, oh, we could just we could just get a few bozos in here to say a bunch of generic shit. And then we'll just wrap it up and put it out like a Y2K video. And make sure one of the professionals has mutton chops. Thank you. Yeah, to survive the apocalypse, you have to have hair here and not here. <laughs> I mean, I'm in no position to be making fun of facial hair, but I'm gonna do it. Also, another thing I wanna talk about in this video that's very weird, like everybody in this video is is white. Like every, every single person. The experts, the host, the actors they hired for the B-roll, like everybody. And I just gotta say, dude, it kinda makes sense because hoarding supplies and resources all for yourself is historically a pretty white thing to do and then justifying it by saying stuff like oh you just never know or fucking better safe than sorry i've seen it dude i grew up like i guess like lower middle class i would say but dude when i went over to my rich friend's house it's crazy their pantries and basements were like grocery stores like straight up like you know the the, pa the big packs of stuff you have at convenience stores they would just have those in their basement uh -huh. if i was a kid and i got a gift card to Steven's basement? Dude, I'd be hyped. He gets so much shit. And it's also no coincidence that it was like all <laughs> white people buying up the toilet paper last year, you know? Because we're all full of shit. These whiteies are not tidy. So around the halfway point, they start talking about how the economy is going to collapse because of Y2K. Another of the key elements in any preparedness program is financial planning. So their advice is to take out a bunch of money to have just in cash and also to just have a bunch of silver and gold. I recommend a similar amount in gold and silver coins. Uh, that'll protect you against anything that might happen. <laughs> just in case. Which is so fucking weird, man, because like silver and gold, they only have value when they're in a system that gives them value. Correct? Like, if we all just decided that gold was worth, like, two cents, wouldn't that just, wouldn't it mean that's just two cents now? Like, if everyone was like, you know what, gold's ugly. Gold's kind of fucking lame. I'm a dumbass. I don't know anything about silver and gold. Unless we're talking about the Pokemon games. Ayo. Or should I say, oh oh <laughs> I just think if the world was ending, people wouldn't be like, ah, well, at least I got this shiny rock. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna be A-OK. -okay. Oh, no. Oh, damn, I forgot there's no laws anymore. Damn it. Well, at least it wasn't a big shark. Oh! Also, they go off the rails so many times in this video. I mean, so do I in all of my videos, but I'm not a cable TV production, okay? Like in this video, it constantly feels like they're trying to reach the word count on an essay. They'll fill time with just whatever the fuck they can. <laughs> like this scene where they just show a house on fire for way too long. <laughs> Another example, they'll start talking and they'll kind of just trail off because these experts don't fucking know what they're talking about. And they'll just end up saying super generic stuff with zero substance. You're talking about economic uncertainty. The number one rule is diversification. And don't do any one thing with your money. Put a little in each area. There's a great amount of wisdom when you talk about diversification in assets. Guys, <laughs> is the world going to end or not? You're telling people to diversify their investment portfolios? Should I be worried or should I be buying low and selling high? What the fuck? Remember, stock up on food and water because these are the end of days. So we're fucked, okay? But also, maybe invest in Dogecoin while you're at it, you know? There's a lot of potential there. We need to plan for our future. Okay, so we're getting close to the end and they really saved the wackiest shit for last. Okay, so they go on to talk about how you need to stock up on a bunch of uh, medication, you know, just in case. And <laughs> they said you might need to uh, convince your doctor that you need more medication. And then they go on to say this. But they have a right, indeed they have an obligation to themselves and to their family to ask for extended prescriptions. You may have to fight for them, you may have to threaten. Uh, you certainly may have to beg in some cases in order to make that happen. But if you live on prescription medication, I would make sure you had three to six months of it at least. <laughs> Just full on advocating threats of violence towards medical professionals. Only 90s kids remember that. You know, when you ask your doctor, you might have to convince them. You know, you might have to beg a little bit. You might have to threaten them, though. 
Maybe take him hostage, slap him around a bit, could tie him to a pipe in an old bathroom, play a video of a little clown of him saying, I want to play a game. You know, you know the stuff you do with your doctor. Hey doc, I need some more medication. Okay, well I can't do that. It's unethical and honestly pretty dangerous given your track record. I'll kill you. I'm sorry? I said I'll kill you. I'll straight up kill you if you don't give me my medication, okay? Y2K is next week. I gotta make sure I'm safe when the world ends. Sir, with all due respect, the world ends. I don't think you'll be worrying about your erectile dysfunction. Hey, whoa, 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 keep it down. I'm sorry, keep it down? I thought you wanted the opposite. Okay, there's one more part that I want to show you guys. It's right by the end. They're talking about like the attitude that you and your family should have when dealing with the Y2K crisis that never happened. This guy, Patrick Rogue, he's talking about stuff and he just comes way out of left field with a bonker statement. Up to this point, because it's computers and it's technological, for the most part, uh, women have not had a big involvement in it on the family level. And that's crucial for it to be fixed around the country. You know, it's kind of a Mars thing. Uh, it has to do with computers and time and dates and all of this. And yet, for it to really be fixed in a family, it has to be addressed by the nurturing and mothering side. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Patrick. <laughs> Patrick. Pump the brakes, buddy. Patrick Rogue. You've... You've gone rogue, okay? Give me your badge and your gun. On national television, homeboy just said, Women don't understand computers, dates, or time. But since they're nurturing, and that's all they're good for, they need to carry all the weight here. It has to do with computers and time and dates. So many people saw this and was like, yep, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. What time is it? What are computers? And what day is it today? Anybody want to get nurtured? Raise your hand. It's also so crazy and just mean and sexist to insinuate that women didn't understand the Y2K frenzy when literally nobody understood the Y2K frenzy, right? There's nothing to understand, you fucking idiots. Nothing happened. We were fine. It was for sure men that created all this panic around a problem that didn't even exist. The first thing we have to realize is that this problem is entirely man-made. Man, these women, man, they don't understand Y2K at all. Okay, what's Y2K? Um, you know, it, it's the, the, the dates, the time. You know, and the computers and not gonna work because of this, because of the stand mixers. And it's also the, uh, uh, just give me my boner pills already, man. Make sure you write food on them so I know I can eat them. Okay, holy shit. I think that's enough Y2K prep for one day. For the most part, this video has some like good tips on like how to prepare your family for an emergency situation. But honestly, it's like 40 minutes of fear mongering and just telling people to panic buy for a thing that didn't even happen. And I feel bad if people actually saw this in 1999 and like actually followed all the tips because holy shit, they just had two liter bottles of water just hidden all over their house. They had labeled everything as food so they can eat it. And then they threatened their doctor's life while being covered in silver and gold. <laughs> That's psycho behavior, dude. You're gonna spend New Year's in jail. Thankfully, nothing bad happened at the turn of the millennium. The internet was A-OK -okay, and it went on to flourish and become the most integral part of human and cultural development. Or not, you know, yeah, and that's fine. Speaking of the internet, let's hear a word from today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Folks, the internet is awesome, but it can also be very dangerous if you don't take the necessary precautions. Every time you connect to an unencrypted Wi-Fi network, your passwords and financial information can be accessed by hackers, your internet service provider can see all of your browsing history and sell it to ad companies, and your internet service provider can do this even when you're connected to your encrypted network without a VPN. It's all just wide open to these jerks. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like taking a personal phone call on speaker on like a crowded bus so everyone around you can hear your personal details and nobody wants that. Okay, especially you. Luckily, ExpressVPN encrypts your data through a secure tunnel so nobody can see who you are or what you're up to. Also, ExpressVPN's encryption is so strong that it would take a hacker with a supercomputer literally billions of years to crack. ExpressVPN also masks your IP address by rerouting your connection through one of their 3,000 plus servers. And with servers in 94 different countries, you have a wide variety of places you can choose to appear from. And while we're on the topic of appearing from other places, on top of providing you with safety and privacy, ExpressVPN also allows you to vastly expand your entertainment library. Let me explain. 
complaint. Say, for example, you're in the US and you want to watch Prison Break on Netflix. Well, you'd be out of luck. It isn't on American Netflix, but it's on Canadian Netflix. It's also on the UK Netflix. So all you have to do is change your server to one in Canada or one in the UK. And there you go, dude, you're watching Prison Break. Still not convinced? Listen up. ExpressVPN is consistently faster than any other VPN provider. They have 24-7 customer support. They're super easy to use. You can connect with just one simple click. And it's the top rated VPN provider. Rated number one by CNET, The Verge, Wired, Tech Radar, and many more. And believe it or not, it gets better. ExpressVPN are hooking you up with a great deal. Find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash curtistown or clicking the link in my description below. It's really that easy. Expressvpn.com slash curtistown or just click the link in the description. All right, thank you so much to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video and so many others in the past. I've been using ExpressVPN every day for the past like two years and I honestly cannot recommend it enough. And also when you check out the sponsors, it helps me out a bunch as well. So everybody wins here, man. All right, thanks so much back to me all right thanks so much for watching the video if you enjoyed it please press the like button because one like equals one two liter bottle of water that i will hide in your house uh leave a comment let me know if you uh remember y2k or 2012 uh it's very fascinating and it sort of brings us all together right talking about the world ending misery loves company you know press the subscribe button because uh, as soon as you press the subscribe button you become a valued citizen of curtistown if you didn't know curtistown is the best place to live in the world and i'm the mayor so you have to be nice to me it's the law. Yeah, check the description for the things I do. My Instagram, Twitter, my weekly podcast called Very Really Good, my gaming channel, my Twitch, tour dates. Going on tour, that's crazy. All right, that's it. I would stick around, but I have to go, unfortunately. I have to dip myself in gold. Bye-bye. <laughs>